Hi friends, in this video series, we are developing and deploying AI agents to different services from GCP, AWS and Azure. We have three videos so far. In the first video, we build the agent, we give it access to some database tools so that the agent can answer queries related to the customer's order status in natural language. In the second video, we wrap the agent in a fast API application so that the client apps can make HTTP requests to interact with our agent. And in the third video, we containerized our application and tested it locally. In this video, we will deploy our agent, the containerized version of our agent on GCP Cloud Run. Okay. All right. Okay. So GCP Cloud Run, it's a fully managed serverless platform to run containerized applications. All we do is we take our application, we containerize it and we deploy it to Cloud Run. Then rest of the things like scaling, networking, managing the infrastructure, etc. Everything is done by Google Cloud Run. Okay. And this service is good for HTTP requests, APIs, web apps, and maybe some event driven services, etc. etc. All right. So we are within this Google Cloud Run folder. I'll make all the code available on GitHub. So in the previous videos, we have discussed our app as well as the Docker file in detail, but let's very quickly go over it. So we are using fast API to create the endpoints or wrap our agent, uh, Pydantic for enforcing the input output. We are using Agno for the agentic uh, building, uh, building the agent, accessing the open AI models, uh, giving some tools to the agent and also writing the agent interaction to Postgres database. Now we have database hosted on AWS. Here is our connection. And then here we are creating a couple of uh, SQL database tools. Uh, this is all done by Agno under the hood. And for storage, for storing the agent interactions, uh, we define uh, the same database and we define a new table name. All right, we have the agent prompt, which simply says, hey, you are here to help the customers uh, tracking their order status, ask their order, order ID or tracking ID, and then uh, search for uh, the tracking ID within the database uh, to find out uh, if, the, if it exists and what's the status. All right, then we define our agent. Um, uh, it's very standard. We give it an LLM. Uh, we give it a, uh, some uh, storage, the database tools. Uh, since it is conversational, uh, we also enable the history so that they didn't know all the uh, chats happen within that particular conversation. All right. Then we define our fast API app, uh, the input output models, uh, which is simply uh, the text, text input, text output uh, using Pydantic uh, base model. And we have created two endpoints. So the first one, uh, just to check the status, and the second one, uh, the chat, uh, which is where uh, the user uh, input, uh, the text message, uh, goes in. Uh, we invoke the agent with the user message, and we send the response uh, back to the client app. Okay. And we have also discussed uh, the Docker file, okay, which contains broadly four sections. First, we define this lightweight OS. Then we install the libraries and the framework. Third, uh, we copy our application code itself. And in the fourth one. Uh, this is run uh, at the time of running, uh, whereas these three are run uh, at the time of building the uh, Docker image. Okay. Now, this one is not a good practice. Uh, uh, the environmental variables, like in this case, the OpenAI uh, API model, as well as our connection to the database. Now, typically in our application code, we store all our secrets in some sort of cloud secret manager and we access them uh, within our code using uh, some uh, SDKs, uh, etc. Right? But to keep it simple, uh, we are copying across this .env env file with all the credentials, but that's not a, a good practice, okay? Let's just keep it simple. Now, the only thing new is we need to build this cloudbuild.yaml file, okay? This contain again, three sections. We are going to build this Docker image, push the Docker image to GCR, uh, which is the Google container registry, and then we deploy uh, the container from there to Cloud Run. Okay, so to build the Docker image, we need some instance, right? So this is the instance provided by the uh, Google for building the Docker images. All we are doing is uh, we are building this image uh, in the current folder. So it expects a Docker file as well as our application code. Okay, uh, and then a tag, we give it a name. So we are simply calling it AI agent app. This is my project name, Shri-NANA. Uh, GCR means uh, Google Container Registry. Okay, so that will build containerize our application. Okay, our fast AI application. And then the second one simple. We use the same instance just to push our uh, container image to uh, GCR Container Registry. And in the final step, uh, we deploy the container to Cloud Run service. We give it a name, uh, the service name. By the way, these two need not be the same. This is the 
Docker container name, whereas this is uh, the service name. Okay, all right. So this is our container or the Docker image which we are deploying. And then uh, the important one, we need to supply a service account. Here I have removed, uh, uh, but this is typically a bunch of numbers. Okay. Now allow unauthenticated. Uh, this is just for testing purpose. So we allow the traffic from anywhere. But in a real world scenario, you might uh, uh, enable only particular ports or some authentication, uh, particular IP addresses, etc., etc. All right. So very simple. The new thing is just creating this cloud build.yaml file with three sections. Build the container, push the container to GCR, and deploy the container to cloud run. All right. Now we need to run this cloud build yaml file uh, here i have this commands file which i will also include in the uh, github repo so assuming you already have a gcp account and uh, the first thing you would do is go to your terminal and then just run uh, the g cloud auth login that will open up a browser page where you can uh, authenticate and then you run this command it actually require a couple of things to be pre configured uh, but don't worry when you run this command it will ask you uh, step by step uh, what all you need to do for example which region you want to deploy what project within one google cloud account you might have multiple projects right so it will give you just uh, uh, it, it make the process easy so instead of asking you to typing okay uh, which cloud is it uh, ap southeast uh, uh, or us central etc it will give you these numbers uh, maybe i'll show you one so this one it will shows all your configured options so maybe let me show all right so this is what I have. Now all these things uh, you can change uh, by using G Cloud config set. For example, if you want to set uh, a project, uh, here is how you can set the project, the compute region, the compute zone, uh, etc. All right, and then you simply run this G Cloud builds submit, okay? Which I have already run. Uh, this is how it looks like. Yeah. This must be it. Yeah. So G Cloud build submit. Okay. I'll show you where it started. Yeah. So essentially, it execute the commands we have in the cloud build .yaml file, uh, which I will show you on the build. So, by the way, our database is hosted on AWS. Uh, it's a Postgres SQL database, and then uh, this is how our cloud build service look like. So these are all the deployments, uh, not just related to cloud run, but app engine, cloud functions, etc., etc. Uh, let's have a look at the cloud uh, run related one. Okay, yeah, so it has just the three steps we define in our cloud build file. So these three, as you can see from here. So the first one, we are building uh, the Docker container. The second one, we are pushing it to GCR. And in the final one, we are deploying it to Cloud Run. Okay, so those are the three steps. Now, if everything goes successful, you should see a service URL like this. Okay, so that's Cloud Build. And then if we go to Artifact Registry, which is where our containers, the code, or any other artifacts reside, uh, Google used to have two services, one Artifact Registry and Container Registry, but they club the Container Registry within art, uh, this broader Artifact Registry. All right, so yeah, so gcr.io, which contains this all our Docker containers, uh, this GCF that's related to cloud functions, uh, GAE that one related to uh, app engines. Okay, don't worry, we will cover these in the next videos. Uh, here we have GCR, and these are the different services I have. For example, if I look at this one, so I have deployed two containers, right? I mean, we might have different versions of the applications, we might change the prompt, things like that, right? So here are all the different versions of the container. I have pushed it pushed to my GCR, okay? So we looked at cloud build, uh, artifact registry and then here is our actual cloud run service okay so this is how it look, looks like here we have all our container services deployed as well as function services things like that we will look at the functions in the next video but let's look at uh, 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 the container services all right okay go here and then uh, I guess like any other cloud uh, provider uh, it here on this page we can see lots of very useful information like how many requests are getting what is the latency for request how much memory etc they are consuming are there any bottlenecks etc etc right so all this information is super useful uh, when you deploy in production you want to uh, monitor uh, everything happening here but uh, sometimes even you remember here we have allow unauthenticated right but that sometimes that can take uh, sometimes to come into effect so what you want to do is go to your app and in security, by default, it requires authentication. 
So choose this one, allow public access. Uh, that, that's for testing purpose, okay? That's the first thing you would do if it's not already public. And the most important one is here, the revisions, okay? So here, let's imagine we have an agent uh, and then let's say it's not uh, answering well when the customer asks in a particular way. So we update our agent prompt and we deploy it. But this time we might not want to uh, decommission the old agent and uh, redirect 100% of our, our traffic uh, to the new agent, right? We might want to implement this uh, uh, blue-green uh, strategy to figure out which agent is working better, etc., etc., right? So the good thing is, under this service, we can have as many versions as we want, okay? So the users will be hitting the same endpoint, but depending on how we configure here, for example, here I can say manage traffic. So here, for each version, I can define, uh, for example, I can say, okay, 60% for this one, and then I can add another one, maybe 20% for that one, maybe another one, and maybe uh, the remaining 20%, right? So we can have different versions of the agent. It could be maybe uh, the prompt or the tools, uh, whatnot, right? Uh, so we have all, the, all such variations, and we can split the traffic between different versions to figure out which one is uh, working best, okay? Now, we don't have to do anything. All that is uh, managed by GCP under the hood, okay? All we need to do is just configure uh, the traffic, okay? So this is our endpoint. Uh, okay, go here. Since it is a serverless, uh, first time it can take uh, some time, but once it is in warm stage, uh, then it runs uh, very fast, okay? Right, should be up. Yeah, so we are at root. Uh, the order tracking AI agent is up and running. Uh, so if you go to our app, so by default, this is the endpoint which gets invoked. Now we want to invoke this chat, right? Now, since this is a fast API application, uh, from here also, we can access our docs, okay? We can access our doc, invoke our agent, etc. But let's take this endpoint. Okay, let's take this endpoint. Go to Postman. All right, this is not docs. Our endpoint is chat, okay? Uh, again, we don't have any authentication, so authorization, set it to no auth, otherwise it wouldn't work. By default, it, it's, uh, it's I think, base, basic auth or something, so set it to no auth. Headers, accept and content type, uh, both of them application JSON, and finally, in the body, it takes only this user message. Okay, so let's just invoke. a bit slow in the meantime uh, let's have okay here is our response all right uh, order follows here is the customer name uh, uh, some delivery etc etc now here is a very very quick re recap all we have done is we have created this new file cloud build.yaml which contains three sections build the docker image push it to gcr and deploy it to cloud run okay now if everything goes well uh, you will see a new container in uh, the container registry, sorry, artifact registry under gcr.io. Then uh, the build, three steps should be successful. And within Cloud Run, we have our service. Now we can have as many versions as we want and we can split the traffic between them. Uh, if we are doing some trial and error to figure out which prompts work best, etc., etc., and we can find out the best one and then redirect 100% of the traffic to that agent. So as I mentioned, the good thing is it's completely managed by uh, GCP. Uh, the scaling, uh, the infrastructure, uh, security, etc., etc., um, uh, and we get charged only when the agent is uh, up and running, uh, since it is a serverless. Okay, uh, that's all for this video. If you find it uh, useful, uh, please consider uh, support and sharing in your network. And in the next video, we will deploy our agent as a simple function. Right? It's like uh, AWS Lambda function, very simple function which we can uh, invoke. All right, uh, that's all for this video. Thank you very much.